Hi guys, welcome to Little Wicket Railway. I'm Rob and in this video we're making G-scale scenery using the Algo Laser Alpha 22 Watt Laser. A few weeks ago I shared my first experience of using the Algo Laser Alpha and I used it to build a 00 scale cattle dock. Since then, I've been using it quite a bit. I've made some unique gifts for friends which have gone down pretty well, and my mum is really into doll's houses, so I made a few small things for her, such as a garden gate, a bird table, and a micro doll's house to go inside her doll's house. So having got many hours of laser engraving and cutting under my belt, I can honestly say that the Algo Laser Alpha is a great bit of kit. But having had it a while, I really wanted to put it to the test and take on a bigger project. Something where I could take advantage of the large work area and the speed at which it can engrave by making something large. I've got the G-Gage Railway that runs around the workshop and currently it doesn't have a lot of scenery on it. Could I use the laser to create a low relief building and help add a bit of life to the railway? And if you're wondering what low relief means, it's just where the building is incomplete and doesn't go all the way back. So it could just be the front of the building, for example. And that's ideal for my railway because I don't have much space between the wall and the rails. What I really need is something that gives the illusion that the building goes all the way back, but is actually only a couple of centimetres deep. So I thought I'd have a go at creating a factory or a warehouse that's been built next to the line. I want it to have large factory windows, old style brickwork, and to be a couple of stories high. It's going to have double doors in the middle on the second floor and a hoist so that it can load goods into wagons that are passing by. So that's the ambitious plan. Let's get designing it in the Lightburn software. In Lightburn, I started by marking out the size of the panel I wanted to work with. And for this project, I think 35 centimeters square is about right for the scale. And it will comfortably fit in the 40 centimeter square work area the Alpha has. Then I used the array function to create some brickwork that will be engraved on the panel. I did experiment with using a brickwork image to engrave with and did test engravings of them both to compare. Using the image gives a weathered looking brick effect, which is more realistic, but I thought the clean lined version suited the Malvern Sills Railway better. The test pieces also let me check out the power and speed settings. To create the impression of depth, I wanted the low relief building to have a few different layers. So holes for the windows and doors needed to be cut into the main brickwork. Then the arches above the windows would sit on top of the brickwork and then the windows would be recessed and set back. Separately I needed some window sills and those again would stick out from the opening. Similarly with the doors, they would be separate because I wanted to put hinges on them so that they opened inwards slightly. And to give it a bit more depth, I designed some side pieces that only go back a few centimetres and some corner pieces just to give it a nice edge. I designed a very basic hoist bracket which I wanted to attach to the brickwork on hinges so that it could swing out from the doorway over the tracks. And as I was searching for inspiration for the project, I came across this G-scale cargo crate. User CM Reader had shared it and it looked perfect for what I wanted. It only took seconds to import into Lightburn and adjust the cutting settings. So with all the files ready to go, it was time to start lasering. Starting with the crate which was cut from 2mm ply and only took about 5 minutes. Then it was onto the main piece which was being made out of 6mm thick MDF. This is a large panel with lots of detail on it but that wasn't an issue for the Algo Laser Alpha. At 22 watts this laser is one of the most powerful in its category, making use of the most advanced second generation COS technology and the polarised beam combination improves the performance of the beam by 40%. Cutting through 6mm MDF wasn't an issue. For the engraving, it turns out that the way I'd set the brickwork up in Lightburn was really inefficient, and I could have shaved a lot of time off if I had arranged it differently, but thankfully, because this laser can combine power with speed, even my rubbish design was done in a couple of hours. I talked about safety in my last video. The Alpha has plenty of safety features built in, like the loss of signal detection, the key lock, and the big red stop button but it's also essential that you always wear eye protection specific to lasers and operate in ventilated areas. I was doing this in a covered area outside and it was freezing, requiring the warmest hat I had, so this has now become my winter laser cutting outfit. Originally, I was going to cut all the pieces out of the six millimeter MDF, but decided they looked a bit too thick, so recut the windows, arches and sills out of three millimeter MDF, which I think looks a lot better. Cutting things like windows is where the laser makes life really easy. Doing all these repetitive cuts by hand would take ages and there's no way I'd be able to make it look this good. I hate waste so I've even got a plan for all the little bits that are being cut out of the window panes. I think the hoist looks great, again trying to cut perfect circles like this by hand wouldn't be possible for me, but the laser does it in seconds and is incredibly precise. 
I'd heard that because the laser is so powerful, you could even engrave on stainless steel. So I had a go making a sign and you'll see what it says later. But that was all the lasering done, it was time to assemble. Starting with the crate because that seemed pretty straightforward and I'm just using tacky glue for everything because it works well on wood and dries really fast. Then it was onto the main building. Here's my brickwork and I love how clean it looks. Then I've got the hoist bracket. I've just used a couple of doll's house hinges on here and a nut and bolt to create the pulley. Then we've got five windows, two doors, six ledges and all the little pieces from the window panes, the sides and top pieces and finally the brick arches. I started by gluing the corners together, making sure the edges were aligned, and then moved on to installing all the sills and ledges. As you can see, these stick out by about half a centimetre because I didn't want this building to seem too flat. Then it was onto the arches, again stuck onto the face of the brickwork to bring it out slightly. Next up was the windows, and these went behind the brickwork to add some depth. Getting them all straight and aligned was a bit tricky. Time for the sides and top to go on, and then I used all those leftover window bits to add some decorative brickwork along the top. With all the structural stuff done, it was ready for the hoist to be pinned to the front. Then on the backs of the windows, I added some transparent sheet to represent glass window panes. I secured this using Deluxe Materials glue and glaze because it dries crystal clear. I realised that using the pins that came with the hinges wasn't going to work on the doors because they were too thin, so decided to super glue the hinges on here. I appreciate this isn't going to be as strong as the pins, but these won't be opened or closed very often, so it's good enough for this purpose. And here we go, the final product. I love how it's turned out. This is the sign that I engraved on the steel. I think I'd go for slightly thicker steel next time because the heat has caused it to warp slightly, but it still looks pretty impressive. I added some chain to the hoist with a hook that connects to a nut that I glued on top of the crate. And in future, it'd be really cool to have a motor that could raise and lower the crate. And here it is on the layout. And there's plenty more I could do to this. Obviously it could use a bit of paint, and I'd like to add some guttering and put some back seam behind the windows to show the warehouse interior, maybe with some LED lighting. But I think I'm happy with where I've got to for now. If you're interested in finding out more about the Algo Laser Alpha or buying one, then check out the affiliate links in the description below. Full disclosure, they're letting me keep the machine, but I can honestly say that I do rate this product. At around £600, it's not cheap, but could be economical if you're going to use it a lot or sell what you create. And on that subject, I'll be putting a few things on Etsy if you'd like to check them out, and there'll be a link in the description. If you enjoyed the video, then please press the like button and subscribe to the channel. Special thanks to all the YouTube members and patrons for your support. It's very much appreciated and your names are on screen now. That's about it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll hopefully see you again soon.